the red pill ideology looks at um, the high body count. You know, you talk about yeah. this sleeping around with different women. Mm. That is a sign of strength. You've conquered this woman. You've, you've, sure. you, 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 you're victorious here. But the Bible and, and the biblical view looks at that as a form of cowardice because you're giving in to your temptations. You're giving in to your flesh instead of having the strength to say no. Yeah. No. I will say no to the flesh and I'll live by the spirit. That's true strength. Like you, you and I both know this when we talk about um, in our own personal life, saying no to the flesh. I remember we did that, you know, the 40 day fasts, mm. how hard it is to control your appetite. And you look at that both from, you know, in a physical world, um, you look at that without food, without, you know, sex, saying no to the things of the spirit. And you're, you're like, well, it's because I'm esteeming the things of the spirit, saying no to the things of the flesh, sorry. Is because we're looking at the things of the spirit as our ultimate priority. Amen. And walking in the spirit, you don't gratify the desires exactly. of the flesh. So the whole idea is that if you want to examine yourself and the path that you're taking, whether it is in the spirit and satisfying God, then you'll find yourself not giving in to those temptations. Mm. And it's easy for men these days, especially when the option is so vast out there yeah. and it's easy Dude, to, with online online the online. online stuff and the online dating and the accessibility you have to such detrimental things it's and what's interesting i i, I want to get there uh but before i get there i want to i want us to read a verse here it's in first peter chapter 3 verse 7 mm. husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your praise may not be hindered so we can see here being heirs together of the grace of life is the value that we have in god yeah. right we are yeah. equally valuable in god but we can see that there is a difference here men ought to honor their wives as to a weaker vessel mm. Now, a lot of people would look at that and they would take that as an advantage because if you find a weakness in someone and often, for example, on on a soccer team mm -hmm. right, um, or football, whatever you, you play or watch, that one team will try and find a weakness in the other team yeah. and will try and exploit that. And often sometimes that happens within relationship in marriage. Mm -hmm. The husbands would try to exploit the weakness of their wives and use that against them. Mm. But what they don't recognize is there's no two teams playing in that marriage. Yeah, exactly. They are one flesh, they are one team. So if you think about it this way, if you're one team and you have a weakness in your team, what do you do? Mm. You strengthen it, you That's protect right. it. That's right. So the whole point of it if you find weakness in your partner, and men are not perfect, they have a, their weaknesses too. If there is a weakness in your partner, you don't get to exploit it. God has shown it to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're ought to protect and edify the person. That's right. That's you right. You don't just protect and let the person live that way, right? You're meant to edify and encourage them to overcome their weaknesses. This is a very important thing because oftentimes when we talk about the deterioration of marriages um a lot of women and a lot of times on um, the deterioration of marriages usually it's the woman today who is initiating divorces and it's because the men who don't lead their wives they're not strengthening as you're saying they're not strengthening those weak points and mm -hmm. the weaknesses that they see men have weak points Absolutely, we do. And our wives will definitely let us know where they are. They do, yeah. They do. But um, <laughs> if you're seeing a weak point in your wife and you ignore it, instead of saying, and this, I'm guilty of this as well, but you ignore it and you don't feed or, or feed her with the word of God to strengthen it, what will happen? You were talking about um, people finding the weak link in your marriage. A lot of the deterioration in marriages is because other men will see your wife that her needs are not being met and they look at that as a weakness and that's the key to destroying that marriage mm. satan did that in the garden of eden i was literally going to say that yeah. where where do we know of something yeah. like that so satan comes in to the weak, weaker vessel of the marriage comes to eve to start breaking the walls down 
Eve falls and then turns to Adam and then Adam falls because of Eve, right? Yeah. Because, well, you know, in his own weakness because he didn't do he didn't fulfill the role that he was there for to strengthen her to protect her to provide for her spiritual needs and to say no and intervene and say no here's the weakness and here i am to lead yeah amen well you did bring out a good point You, you spoke about how um the modern masculinity is viewing women for example with high body count mm-hmm. and i only realize what the meaning of that meaning like for example women who would sleep around Mm -hmm. and they have many different partners um they would treat them as these are not marriage material yeah these are prostitutes and if you want to have fun you could spend Mm -hmm. your time with them yeah but it's not like you're looking for a meaningful relationship it's like a practice run it is it is but then when we look at the bible and we're looking at Jesus being our example. He did come across women mm. who were considered to be prostitutes yeah, yeah. or with quote unquote high body count. Mm. One example is um, John chapter four. Right? Yeah, yeah. She's had five husbands and the person that she was with is not even her husband. Jesus didn't be like, oh, well, she just looks like she's prostituted herself she can't keep a house Mm -hmm. so she's going from one man to another why do i need to bother myself with her yet jesus used that woman changed her heart and she changed her whole village she went back to her village she told them what jesus said to her and the village came to jesus and said could you stay with us Mm -hmm. so jesus used a broken person and what what we see here with high body count yeah a broken person and turned them into something that is so beautiful that he created himself originally and he used them to be influential mm. in their lives yeah. so please christian men don't look down at people especially women if they have their high body count or they're sleeping around men do that as well mm. we we shouldn't be having that um we shouldn't we shouldn't have the mindset of hypocrisy yeah where you treat certain people differently than others both of them are a sin right whether it's a man doing it or whether a woman is doing yeah. it yeah. we call birth to repentance if a man does it and he repents could he be a marriage material of course, of course. he can yeah. because yeah. christ has changed his heart why can't that happen to women that can happen to women as well god changes the woman's heart and she can be the most amazing wife